now let's look at uh, more closely the cell cycle. Um, this image that's shown over here, I'll, before I will go on, I just want to point out something over here. This is an image in which you can see that there is um, a form of a spindle, as it's called. Spindle, um, because it's, it's got this unique pattern like this. It looks like a football. And notice on these regions you have uh, some dark regions that are shown um, over here. And then you have, it seems like there is some sort of a, a, a pole that's, that's holding, holding these. Now these are some images of, so, of some, um, some cell division of, of cells and which are very interesting to understand. So um, coming to the next slide. Okay. Now a series of st stages will happen uh, during uh, M phase or as, um, or as it's called as the meta phase, which stands for the M is a sign for meta phase. Um, a metaphase, um, a mitosis in prokaryotes undergo binary fission instead. What that means is that binary fission is a process in which um, the cell actually pinches off from both sides, as you can see, just like you would take a balloon and you would pinch it. Um, that's what um, uh, it's binary fission and it separates out in two cells. This would be called as binary fission. Binary meaning two, fission is separate out. And then um, uh, however, um, the regular eukaryotic cells will undergo mitosis and then uh, prokaryote, uh, then uh, uh, cytokinesis, which will be division of the of the side of, of the cytoplasm. Okay. Now, often I've talked to you about the chromatids and chromosomes, so let's just look into a little bit more depth as to what is a chromosome. The term chromosome is given to a segment of DNA that has the genes, and it's also um, um, some. It's also the 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 region of the uh, of the DNA that has the gene is called as the coding sequence. So it has the coding, and it also has certain segments that are called as a non-coding sequence. So in other words, um, DNA is a long strand that has sections, and some sections, for example, this the region that I'm coming in blue, may be the reason uh, that the regions of the codes. And these would be the, the, the regions that the code is present, and then it has regions in the center which are called as the non-coding regions. Now, there is a very good reason for that, that why, why not have just the codes, and why does the DNA have this non-coding region? And we'll get to it later on um, when we go into D, more depth with DNA. So a double helix is a term that's given to these two strands of DNA that have this helical uh, structure. So you can almost see that it's a twisted ladder or ribbon-like structure. Now, if closely looked at each of these strands, uh, depict that each of these strands are actually a long length, of the blue region over here that's shown in blue is the, is the DNA segment, but the DNA is then uh, wrapped around certain proteins, and these proteins are called as histones. Just like if you would have a long yarn and you would need some kind of a spool to um, give it, um, to fold around it, so similarly, Histones are the proteins that uh, hold these strands, and the strands are, are wrapped around it. Now, a stack of uh, histones and and and, uh, and the nuclear um, and the DNA segments together are called as the nucleosome. So, a nucleosome is actually a section. Now, numerous nucleosomes then form uh, a coiled. Uh, structure which is the the, the chromosome the, the chromatin now this uh, as you can see over here as the picture shows you the chromatin is shown to you as many many folds now the and keep in mind you've got a strand that is folded around the histone and then the histones are also coiled the nucleosome and each of these coils are then wrapped around this um, looped uh, formation the purpose of this is again to get to make it more condensed because if the, if the strands were really long and thin, it would be um, very, very, very long. It's almost sometimes like six feet long um, D, DNA segments in there. Um, eventually, um, making it more condensed, um, it is now in a form of chromatin. Now, chromatin is, is the stage at which um, mainly when you look at a cell and you and, and, and the interface stage, the, the, the DNA or the genetic material is usually present as chromatin. Chromatin is mainly a tangled mass of uh, long threads 
And before mitosis will begin, uh, as I've been saying in the previous section, um, the chromatin will become very highly coiled and condensed. And this coiled and condensed region is called as the individual chromosomes. Chromosomes are visible. This is uh, visible within cells, but chromatin are not visible. So usually in the interphase stages, like the one that I was talking earlier about, the one that the cell uh, is present in almost, uh, seems like 75% of its life, it's present in interphase. Um, the, nucle the, the length of the DNA is, vis is invisible because it's present as chromatin. So eventually, um, during mitosis, um, just before the cell is ready to divide, um, the, the nuclear division takes place and the DNA replicates and, duplicate, and when it duplicates the chromosome in the parent cell, and now each chromosome has two identical double helix molecules, and each double helix is called as a chromatid. And the two identical chromatids are called as sister chromatids. And we will look at it later um, in the next slide of, of more about the sister chromatids. But keep in mind, um, the highly condensed version of chromatin is, is the chromosome. So chromatin is the thin long one and, chroma, and, uh, and chromosome is, um, is when it is condensed. Another thing that I want to um, bring your attention on this slide is, is the term heterochromatin and, uh, versus euchromatin. Um, heterochromatin, some regions of the chromatin uh, remain tightly coiled and compacted throughout the cell cycle, and they appear as dark bodies um, or dark stains, and these are called as the heterochromatin. That's usually what is visible sometimes. Uh, euchromatin is the, uh, is the active chromatin, and the active chromatin is actually um, only condensed during cell division. Um, the condensation, this allows, the, the reason for the condensation is that it will help the chromosome uh, move as you will see uh, from one end to the other. So just uh, it's important to know the difference between two kinds of chroma chromatin because there is a heterochromatin and a euchromatin. So now let's see what happens uh, just before uh, the chromosome is duplicated. Once the chromosome is duplicated, as you can see in the image over here, you can see all these coils, um, then it forms an exact copy, and this is the duplicated chromosome. Uh, the, the duplicated chromosome is actually appearing to you as two copies of the same a nuclear material, and these are called as chromatids. Uh, chromatids, um, they actually have, each, each strand is also called as one chromatid, so you have two chromatids, and this creates, uh, this duplicated chromosomes will eventually start splitting, as we can see. Now, some more terminology to look at over here. Um, sister chromatids, you should now know what that means, that there is after the chromosome has duplicated, um, it forms what is called as the sister chromatids. Uh, that is, the two identical um, chromatids are called as the sister chromatids. Kinetic cores are regions uh, where the, the two chromatids are attached. So this is the region where the two chromatids attach to each other and therefore is the, uh, the kinetic core. Centromeres are um, also regions that, uh, the, that the two chromatids are constricted and attached at this part too. Actually, kinetic cores are uh, sometimes, they're actually more protein in nature. Kinetic cores are, let's just put down over here, they're more protein in nature. Um, and they develop on either side of the centromere uh, during uh, cell division. As you can see, the centromere is this connection over here, and the chromatin, the, the kinetic cores are these proteins that are shown on the side or the yellow region as they're shown over here. Okay, another something we want to know, some more terminology, and that is um, the term diploid versus haploid. Diploid uh, stands for the term two. Um, so during mitosis, a two N, which is the diploid nucleus, uh, divides to produce half um, the number, and that number um, is, uh, which it could be called as one, but not, not really in uh, mitosis. In mitosis, you 2N divides to produce daughter nuclei that are also 2N. 
We will see later in meiosis that a diploid cell would divide to from half the chromosome number, and if it's half the chromosome number, it's called as haploid. So you will not really see haploid cells in this um, in this in these series of steps. But it's good to know as a vocabulary words, diploid versus haploid. Diploid is two n nucleus. So the the dividing cell, um, which is the the parent cell, will result in daughter cells, and the and the and the number of chromosomes in the daughter cells will be the exact same number as the parental cell. So during um, these series of cell division that we will see um, in a little while, we will notice that um, we will we will see that the two sister chromatids will separate from the region of the centromere and uh, separate out uh, each chromat each sister chromatid, uh, which is the actually duplicated chromosome, and this will rise to and this will eventually give two daughter chromosomes. Um, so we will um, see these cycles in the next coming slides. I don't want to confuse you right away on this part. So now let's look at the, uh, the stages of mitosis. There are five stages of mitosis, prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Here is a nice image in which we can see that the cell is actually undergoing a separation and, you, and the two, and the, and the two um, cells are separating. So um, now each stage of uh, mitosis, uh, the terms um, are important to know as to what is happening in each stage. So make sure you know the apparent feature that happens in prophase. Uh, prophase um, is the first phase in which the nuclear division is about to occur because the chromatin has condensed and the chromosomes are, are visible. Uh, next, it will be followed by prometaphase, in which we will see that the, the sister chromatids will um, start um, separating. Metaphase will be very distinct phase in which I'll show you um, how um, the, the spindles are formed and how they're attached. And then later on the chromosomes will be separated or they will start pulling or separating in a stage that is called as uh, the anaphase and that will be followed by telophase in which the daughter cells um, uh, follow the nuclear membrane that is also divided. So these are the five stages, but just know the names because I'm going to go ahead and uh, we will now look at um, each stage in much more depth so you can know exactly what happens in each phase. Now let's look at the first stage, which is called as a prophase, and list the things that are happening at this stage. The first event that takes place in, in, in prophase is a nuclear envelope disappears. Now remember when you look at a cell, a, a eukaryotic cell in particular, you can see the nucleus that is surrounded by a nuclear membrane. So the nucleus is actually visible in the dark region within a cell. Um, the nuclear envelope starts disappearing. So if the nuclear envelope starts disappearing, uh, the content of the nucleus is not going to be as uh, visible clearly as it is. Now within the, um, or, um, outside the nucleus, there are regions called as the centrioles. And the centrioles are sort of present over here, and let's just say they're over here. Or you might have centrioles over here. Now what happens is the centrioles start migrating so that it, it forms uh, two regions. It, it eventually is going to be like this. So here is an image of the centriole that you can see the centrioles. Here are the centrioles. That the centrioles are going to move around and they will, um, they'll go into two poles. So that's the second most important thing event that takes place under mitosis, the, the under prophase. The third stage is the nucleolus disappears. Nucleolus is are the are are uh, structures that form the ribosomes and they disappear. Uh, and the last most important stage that takes place is the chromatin, which is the the long uh, DNA strands starts condensing and they form chromatodes or uh, chromosomes which are more visible. Now recall that I just gave you an example that whenever we say the term chromosomes, then uh, they are more visible and they're condensed uh, or structured. Also keep in mind that uh, uh, these chromosomes are, are, have been duplicated prior to cell division. So prior to the start of prophase in the G2 and the S phase, the, the DNA has been duplicated. And uh, so these uh, uh, chromosomes will eventually uh, start thickening and eventually form what is called as the, chroma, uh, the chromatids. So these are stages of early prophase. As you can see, centromeres have duplicated. Um, chromatin is also condensing, 
and uh, eventually the chromosomes um, are more visible and uh, the nuclear envelope has disappeared, nucleolus has also disappeared and the spin and the chrome and the centromeres are moving to form what is called as a spindle and or it's in the process of forming the spindle it hasn't really formed yet but it will after um, it goes through 